the page is now up for the Sims 4 Life and Death Expansion Pack. For those of you who want to pre-order, I'm going to do a separate video about pre-ordering because I have my own philosophy about packs that should or shouldn't be pre-ordered and why. To go over what they put in this blog post, there are going to be some early purchase incentives, which they seem to do this with many of the expansion packs. If you're interested in that kind of thing, you would have to order before December 12th. You get a memory box, like a music box, a mask, and a family portrait frame, if you do. Um, and there's more pictures of that if you're interested. And you can always pre-order through Steam or the EA app. But what I was really looking at was a description. I think we got a lot of information from the trailer, but they didn't go into a ton of details. Like, they kind of, you know, it's an overview, so, and it only had three minutes, so it's going to be super fast. But I wanted to go over the details. Where is the gameplay? Now, the gameplay trailer itself is not coming out until October 17th. But for me, with any expansion pack, for it to justify being an expansion pack, it needs to expand on my Sims lives. And so what is the gameplay is always a question when the pack comes out. So let's go through this together and we'll see what they come up with. So in this section, they call it an endless journey. Build your bucket list by collecting goals throughout your Sims life, starting as a young adult. Items will appear on your list based on your Sims traits and family relations, and you can also choose your own. Removing items is possible, but completing them yields powerful rewards. If a Sim's life ends with items still on their list, they can devote their afterlife to completing these unfinished business. The ultimate reward for experiencing everything on their list is the option to be reborn, though you can still choose to move on or remain on this plane as a ghost. Now, that's very interesting. So, young adult through elder will start acquiring these different goals, which we saw in the trailer. She had goals like reconnecting with family, spending the day outside, finding this well. So, I mean, I guess it depends on what type of traits you have and what type of family relationships you have, which family relationships may play into the family dynamics from growing together if you have that expansion pack. I hope they do give us that cross-pack compatibility. And then your ultimate reward for finishing your list is you can be reborn, I guess, into another family. I'm not sure how that works. Are you going to just be reborn into the same family? Like, what does that look like? Or you can choose to just pass away or stay on the plane as a ghost. So does that mean that ghosts are now playable? Or what does that look like? That's interesting. Number two, a ghastly, gorgeous career. Make this your life's work with a career on reaping souls, helping ghosts, dispersing hauntings, and becoming a member of Grimm's team. Or you could become a mortician and deal with death more from the perspective of the living. Outside of work, you may enjoy spending your days exploring crypts and building your thanatology skill for the new ghost historian aspiration. But I'm so sorry, I could be mispronouncing thanatology. That's what it looks like it's pronounced as. These things, among other dark Diversions like bonding with your pet crow or collecting and reading the lost tarot cards of Lady Raven Dancer Goth will have a special appeal to Sims who are macabre, which is one of three new traits. So in this, maybe it's macabre. I think it's actually macabre. They come up with these words and they expect us to be able to read them. It's ridiculous. Um, so the two new careers is the Grim career and the Mortician career. I wonder if Mortician is going to be a rabbit hole. The Grim career sounds active because you're reaping souls, helping ghosts, doing hauntings. Seems like a more of an active career. And we see a lot of Sims dressed in like this outfit. And we saw that in the trailer. So that one seems more whatever. I'm also curious about this new ghost historian aspiration. So I guess you're just learning more about ghosts, interacting with ghosts, ghost sightings, um, and then tarot card reading. So it looks like that's maybe an activity or a skill. So that's great. That's where we see gameplay. Whether I play the rabbit hole mortician career, if it is a rabbit hole, the grim active career, becoming a ghost historian, and bonding with the creepy things in this new world, that gives us something for our Sims to try and strive for. Okay, goodbye for now. Different Sims will grieve in different ways. There are now four types that will tie into both Sims' personalities and the relationship with the deceased. 
Grieving rituals are customizable and unscripted, allowing you to hold whatever type of event or events fit your life, fit your story. In life, Sims will create wills, which can be used to pass down heirlooms, assign guardians for surviving dependents, distribute their simoleons, and more. Sims can honor the departed with a memorial displaying the memorial display featuring their portrait and by entering their urns in crypts or with custom caskets and grave sites. So the four types they didn't really go into, but that kind of relates and reminds me of the dynamics that came with growing together and love struck. So if you have a close relationship, you'll probably be more upset than someone who has a strained or difficult relationship. So I want to see this cross pack play with love struck and growing together because there's going to be both romantic and family dynamics. And now they will be, I guess, grieving dynamics. <laughs> so it's like a lot of dynamics going on, but it's going to add a lot of personality to our Sims. I want to see what type of options we get for creating a will. And what are they considering heirlooms? Are heirlooms things that your Sim created? So if your Sim's an artist or author, their original works or something that can be heirlooms. I hope they have tie-ins with the... Um, that box that came with growing together. I forget what it's called, but elders were able to, anyone was able to put something in the box and you were able to put like marriage certificates, pictures, items in the box, but elders were able to pass the box on to someone else and give you a message like, hey, you know, our family's focused on hard work. And there was like seven or eight different options to start a legacy for your family through this heirloom box. I definitely want to see more cross play with that as well. So it's starting to sound like growing together is going to be a big part of this because of the family dynamics and the heirlooms. Okay. So friendly or fiendish linger on as a ghost and spend your afterlife helping or terrorizing the living ghosts will grow in their abilities as they do everything from assisting with household chores to levitating living Sims and hanging them upside down fun and profitable as they may drop simoleons. Their interactions with the living can earn them fear or goodness essence, which can both be sold for simoleons. There's a lot to do after death. Ghosts can even pair up for a special spectral woohoo. That's very interesting. Ghosts have not been playable up until this point in The Sims 4, but there were ghosts that were playable in previous Sims expansion or Sims series. I don't want to say The Sims 3, they were playable. I can't remember if they were in The Sims 2 or not. But it's interesting to see that they can either cause terror or have fun. You know, there's a certain ghost woohoo. I'm a little disappointed that ghost woohoo is going to be locked behind an expansion pack when in previous Sims games that wasn't the case. But I guess they have to justify that. So what's really interesting, which is always fun to look at, is the packs that they recommend that are similar to this pack. So they're recommending the werewolves, paranormal, Journey to Batu and Realm of Magic because it falls in the supernatural and fantasy selection, which I agree to a degree. But I think I, I would want to know, is there cross-pack play with these packs for me to justify buying them? So I'll do a separate pack, a separate video on what packs I think go best with this as we get more information. But let me know in the comments below, now that we have a little bit more description, what do you need to see in The Sims 4 Life or Death for you to buy the pack?